Let's continue now with this list of the 101 most commonly confused jury words, which I think would be great to know for those studying for the jury, but anyone looking to improve their English vocabulary. Starting off with glance versus glimpse, I'll give my analysis and then we'll see what they say. I think of glance as to look at something quickly, whereas glimpse is to see that thing. You can glance at something and not actually see what you're looking at. Or as glimpse means you're seeing, you're catching a small sight of the thing that you're looking at. That's the difference to me, but both are quick and short and brief. Let's see what they say. Glance is a verb and means to look rapidly or briefly. Yes, you're looking, not necessarily seeing, but you're glancing in that direction. I glance through the important formulae. Glimpse is a noun and means a brief, incomplete view. You're actually seeing. You're getting a view. The visitors at the museum were shown glimpses of the horrid images of war. What about historic versus historical? I think of historic as a compliment. That victory was historic. You would rarely hear historic meaning a negative, being said in a derogatory way. Historic means record setting. And you're only going to say something's record setting usually when you're praising it. That was a historic achievement. I always get confused whether it's ahistoric or anhistoric, but never mind. I think no one's actually decided, I think. What about historical? Historical is a much more dry word. It just simply means relating to history. It doesn't mean record setting, it just means related to the past, related to history. Whereas historic is much more emotional, it's praising. Let's see what they say. Historic is an adjective and means important or significant, okay? His superhuman skills prove vital during the team's historic win. Record setting, I think, is the best way to think about it. Historical is an adjective and means pertaining to history. All the presidents were listed in historical, chronological order. Okay. Ingenious versus ingenuous. So, ingenious means relating to a genius. Only a genius could have come up with it. That plan is ingenious. It's amazing, clever, smart, only a genius would have come up with it. Whereas ingenuous, the key way to remember this is that it's the opposite of disingenuous. What does disingenuous mean? It means dishonest, disingenuous, not being true. So ingenuous means honest, true. That's how I remember it anyway. Let's see what they say. Ingenious means skillful, clever, original. Yeah, ingenious plan. Just think of the word genius at the end. Whereas ingenuous means honest, sincere, naive. Interesting. Naive has a slightly negative tone. It means you maybe should have known that. You're being a bit ingenuous, a bit too innocent. Like, come on, didn't you know that? All adults know that. So I didn't actually know that, but ingenuous has a slightly negative connotation of a, maybe a lack of maturity. Let's see the example. Being the head of a large company, she often rewarded her ingenuous employees, her honest employees. Okay, well, that's a praising tone. So I guess you could use it in either way, someone being honest or someone being a bit innocent. But either way, it's the opposite of disingenuous, dishonest. Intense versus intensive. This is a harder one for me. Intense means like a lot of that thing. Like an intense stare means like a very hard, long stare. An intense battle means a very powerful, great, amazing battle. Not in a praising sense, just in a shocking sense. Like full of emphasis. Intense is a word you use to emphasise things. You can't really say that was an intense door. But you can say there were some intense discussions. That was an intense film. Really full on. Intensive... I think of in terms of time. If something's intensive, it lasts over a short duration. So an intensive tutoring course would be one where maybe you try to teach everything in three weeks, for example. That's how I think of intensive. Let's see what they say. Intense as an adjective means of great strength or degree, like a huge amount of that thing. Yesterday's boxing match was quite an intense battle, like an incredible battle, full on. Full on is a great analogy, I think. Intensive is an adjective and means using concentrated effort or resources. Concentrated over a short area or time. 
It was an intensive course on effective writing, not lasting for ages, but over a very short area or time period. Just quickly, you can also use intensive to mean using up a lot of that thing. So a capital intensive business uses up a lot of capital or money. A resource intensive industry uses up a lot of resources. Slightly different use of the word intensive that you might want to know there with intensive as a suffix, resource intensive, capital intensive, time intensive. Okay, intensely versus intently. Well, intensely is just the same thing as intense, right? Of a great degree. So an intensely fought battle is one that made the battle intense. I guess they picked this pair because of the second word, intently. Do you know what that means? To follow something intently means attentively, you're paying so much attention. Intense is like the strength of something, how full on it is. Whereas intent is how interested people are, or how interested you are. If she looked at him intensely, she's probably annoyed and like really staring hard. If she looked at him intently, it means she's paying attention to every movement he makes. Subtle difference there. Let's see the examples. She began to dislike him intensely, strongly, after she came to know about his criminal background. That's a bit harsh. Intently is an adjective that means closely or attentively. The little boy watched intently, paying attention, as his brother showed him how to dance to the song. Big difference. Lay versus lie. I wouldn't have known this one, but for the fact that I looked this up a while ago, to lay something means to just place it somewhere. It's nothing to do with the normal use of the word lie. You can't say, I lay down. That's lie down, I lie down on the bed. Lay just means to play something. I lay the book on the table. It is a bit archaic though. People don't tend to use that word as much these days. I'll be honest, lay. Lie, as well as being a dishonest truth, obviously, like he lied. It also means, of course, to rest, to lie down, to lie his head on her shoulder but it's different from lay. And the common mistake that people make is to think that you would say, I want to lay down. No, you want to lie down. I wouldn't say this one would come up too much in the GRE, but it does come up in life where people make that mistake. And you can be among the 1% of people who actually know the difference. To lay is the place, to lie means to lie down. Okay, lightening versus lightning. Only a single letter difference there, the E. But the E means to bring light to something. To lighten up the room means to maybe turn on a light. To lighten your face means to make it paler and less dark. It's to do with light and brightness, lightening. It's even pronounced differently, lightening. By splashing some yellow paint on the black wallpaper, she was lightening it. Whereas lightning, it's pronounced differently, lightning. That's the electrical bolt you see in the sky the flash of white. The sound, by the way, is thunder, but the actual electrical bolt is the lightning. Difference there. Sometimes you see the lightning, and then three seconds later, you hear the thunder. And apparently three seconds means that it's three miles away, but anyway, I don't know if that's a myth. Let's see their examples. The sky began to lighten in the east, get brighter as the sun rose over the seas. The unlucky man was struck by lightning twice during his lifetime. You don't want to get those mistaken. Loathe versus loathe. Is it loathe actually? I think the first one's pronounced loth. I was loth to do that. That's very archaic. I do know what it means, but that's quite an old word. Like, I didn't want to do that. I was loath. I think that's how you pronounce it. I was loath to do that. It rhymes with oath. I was loath to go to the store. I was so lazy. I was loath to help her out. She really annoyed me. I just don't want to do it. I just, I don't like that. Whereas loathe with an E pronounced differently, loathe versus loathe. To loathe something, it's like a more flowy, smooth word. It means to hate it, to abhor it, to think it's disgusting. It's a very strong word. Whereas I was loathe to do that. It's just, I don't want to do it. It's not that strong. I just don't want to do it. I don't fancy it. To loathe something is very different. You absolutely hate it. Let's see their examples. I was loath to leave her company because I liked her. Again, not a super common word. And if you know it, you are definitely in the 1% of English speakers. 
Loathe is a verb that means to hate, despise, or poor, exactly. I loathe him for his bullying attitude over children. I loathe him for his bullying attitude over children. Okay, loose versus lose. I think most people would know that, right? If something's loose, like a button is loose, it's about to fall off. Or if one company is loosely attached to a country, it means it could leave at any point. Not firmly fixed down. Whereas to lose, like your football team could lose in a game, right? A match. You lose the match or you win the match. Or you might lose your ring and you're looking for it. I think most people would know the difference there. My trousers were too loose, and made me feel uncomfortable. They might fall down at any point. To lose means to, I think everyone knows that. I promise you I'll never lose this book. I think the last pair for this video is more interesting. I actually don't think I even know the difference myself. And these words could definitely come up in the GRE. Luxurious, I definitely know. It means to do with luxury, ornamentation, abundance, ostentation. Rich people basically have luxurious goods, luxurious furniture, showing off their wealth, full of luxury basically. Whereas luxuriant, I don't actually know the difference. Like, you wouldn't say that's luxuriant furniture, but why not? I think it's to do with, I know you can say she's got luxuriant hair, and you definitely wouldn't say she's got luxurious hair because that's expensive. Maybe luxuriant is to do with things that are free, like natural, and luxurious is to do with things you can buy. This is my total guess. I know the second one, I'm not 100% sure on the first one. Okay, let's check it out. Luxuriant is an adjective and means rich and abundant or elaborate, okay. It is mostly used in reference to hair or vegetation. So it's kind of along the right lines. You definitely say luxuriant hair. I didn't know you could say luxuriant vegetation, but that is what I was kind of saying about luxuriant, you would say about nature, the luxuriant fields of England, or a luxuriant garden, luxuriant hair, whereas luxurious is things you buy. Both mean amazing, abundant, awesome, rich, but one is to do with things you can buy, one is to do with natural things. That's my definition anyway. The luxuriant fields all across the country meant that famine was farther than ever, further away than ever. They weren't going to starve because the fields were full of crops and stuff like that. Luxurious means expensive, exactly. She always liked to live a luxurious life, spending loads of money. Subtle distinction, and that first word could definitely come up. Actually, both words could come up, and now you know the difference between them. Fairly quick video, but we've covered another 10 pairs of words that you can know both for the test and for the rest of your life. I really hope this video has helped and see you in the next one.